Welcome, everybody, to the Platchat Valorant Awards Show. The very first one. We're all dressed up. We're all ready to go. Look at Bren. Look at the fits that we have. I mean, first of all, I look like a cork. But, but aside from that, we have, I mean... Bren's got the, he's got the You're going to go to a nightclub in Miami. I mean, yeah, Bren is going to a club. He's going to Miami. Come <laughs> he down is, here. We'll he go. He's going to a Miami, Miami club. Connor, Why is there so as much always, chest on show? In the basement. I mean, there's so much it's, chest. It's, it's, yeah. It doesn't button up oh, listen, all the Josh, way. This is what the tier three members are subscribing for, huh? Yeah. The just people want my pasty bars. <laughs> my, <laughs> my skin that just reflects sunlight. I, I genu I'm probably whiter than the wall. Yeah, I think you are, actually. Yeah. Mm. I thought I just saw an apparition team. moving around in our backyard, but it's hopefully me. not. <laughs> hopefully it wasn't. An that. apparition? Was just, yeah, some sort of ghostly figure in our backyard. I don't know. Okay, but, well, they might interrupt us. Yeah, but anyhow, we have the Plat Chat Awards this this episode, but uh, we also have some other topics that we're going to go through. We're going to go through first. Uh, the first one being uh, Joe Ziegler, the, the game director for Valorant, has departed. He's left. He's gone. It's over. <laughs> it's not over. It's shutting over. Down, Valorant, shutting down shutting Valorant. down Valorant. <laughs> Valorant is being shut down. He had the mm. password to the servers and only he could ha get in and he left with it. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I don't really know what to make of this. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm so out of the 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 loop. It's just not within my yeah. lexicon, my mental uh, the the mental stores. I just don't know what game development is like. What is a game director? I don't know. Usually, I mean, you know better, Bren. They're Bren, in charge. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> you know, I've played a video game every now and then. I, usually, I mean, the game directors, I believe, are in charge of a vision of a game as it's to being developed. A vision for a game and organizing and prioritizing what resources need to be poured into. And as the game is out, and Riot are probably working on many different projects. In fact, they are working on many different projects. They probably felt it was better to move them into a different department. I mean... Yeah, we don't know the internal details, but it's not the end of the world. It's not a doomsday scenario. The game's doing pretty well, and they probably want his expertise on different projects. I think it, it can be a herald of a doomsday scenario if the game is doing poorly. You know, like if a game's yeah. getting halfway through its lifespan and a game director leaves or something like that, um, then people will start speculating. Oh well, maybe they just thought there was greener pastures elsewhere, or they're they're just looking for they're trying to bail out of the ship because they know it's not going to work, whatever. But for this, Valorant's only just begun. The story is only just getting started. And during the announcement, he said he's going to work on something new, like a secret project within Riot, as far as I'm yeah. aware. So they probably just, uh, they're trying to make another game. I mean, you can speculate endlessly about they're what making that game Making an might MMO, be. a fighting game, and they're probably working on a bunch of other different stuff. I mean, this is mm. probably a brand new project as well, if they're trying to get somebody in like that. Because normally, you know, if you're trying to recruit for a brand new game that's being developed within your company you want the brightest and best from your other games especially once those games have already gotten onto the track it's much easier to keep a game going than it is to really build it from the ground up and get all of that um that that stuff set he's been working on valorant for eight years is what he yeah. said that's an extraordinary amount of time to see a project through and now that he's seen the birth of his child he's like all right well you can walk you, we've kicked you off the cliff. You can fly. All looking good. We'll move on. So I don't <laughs> think that's a uh, doomsday uh, scenario. It just seems yeah. pretty decent. That's, a very, that's how yeah. birds Do work. Children that's how birds fly. Yeah, that's, that's a very good bird analogy. For yeah, it's bird me. analogy for all the yeah. bird people who like yeah, to watch for, for birds. I mean, for anyone else that has a bird father that, you know, oh, you can walk and has left. <laughs> but that's just like, that's anyone else has had that. I think Josh nailed it, though. He pretty yeah. much put everything out there. I mean, when you work at something for eight years, it's probably <laughs> time to move on. You know, he got it launched. It's over. Uh, there's many other things to do. And uh, I don't think there's anything to be worried, particularly worried about, in my opinion. Plus, also, you don't really know. Obviously, I'm not doubting this person's competence in any way. But you never really know what someone's, uh, like, how much they necessarily were the real driving force behind the game yeah. success right like right. even if you are the game lead and the head game director you don't exactly know how much their vision impacted it right you would assume it impacted a lot and this is not me putting the like saying that like, this guy was bad but you know you never know it's just one person you never really know the true impact of a person until they're gone yeah so 
Definitely. I wonder if this moves the needle on when the new skins are going to get released. <laughs> okay. Uh, next in, well, I mean, I suppose more, I don't know. Well, I don't know what the severity of this story is because there's just an, uh, an element of absurdity to it, but yeah. the crew, ex-crew coach on her got deported from Brazil for not being vaccinated. Yeah, or to be precise, uh, it was, or the wording he was using was that he didn't have health papers, I believe. Right. Um, no, but uh, he, was, no, no. he no, posted he a tweet longer afterwards yeah, saying he wasn't, he wasn't vaccinated. Which, which is what I was going to follow up he on. wasn't vaccinated. Yes, so that's what I was going to follow up on. He he initially posted he's been dodging and duking about his vaccination status, but yeah, I I the guy's just not vaccinated. He's an anti-vaxer. It's very disappointing to be honest because I had heard rumors about this for a while and I was shocked it, it's, when I read it's, this. It's it's been public. He's been tweeting about stuff like this for a while. It's just I think only gotten on people's radars because crew performed really well. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, he is, we'll get to the awards kind of stuff later on, but I think he's seriously in the running for who you would consider to be one of the best coaches of 2021. You know, in terms of actual achievements, yeah. the guy's done it this year. Uh, he's, he's done a great job with crew, but you got just in, even in terms of like career kind of aspects, this is a really bad idea to not be vaccinated because you limit yourself from the, the entirety of Riot Brazil, they're requiring that everybody that's involved mm. in it is fully vaccinated because of the severity of the, the issue. And then you also just limit yourself in so many other ways. Like, it's much more difficult to travel. It's much more difficult to, to get these jobs. People will think that you might be a, a bit weird on other aspects if you are if, if you do hold these kind of views. He, I'm sure he would get really mad at hearing us talk about it as well because the way he puts it is that He's for vaccines in people that really need them, like at-risk groups, but he just doesn't want it for himself because he's super healthy, you know? So, like, he's he, he's exempt from it. He doesn't have to contribute towards herd immunity because he's healthy and he's fine. And it's a very so selfish mentality. It, yes. And, yeah, yeah it's, it's, but, but also when you read his tweets as well, and this is from Google Translate somewhat, it's like hyper, I think it's like hyper libertarian is like what, what it's supposed to be, where essentially you just reject any level of Control. oversight from a government or or anything like that he was talking mm -hmm. about he was having a conversation with mixwell about smoking and saying well you know i know that smoking is bad and it creates large amounts of public um health costs for the larger society but i recognize that it's the uh right of people who smoke to not be taxed on those smokers uh, on, on the cigarettes I was like, how is that a right how is that a right to not be taxed on them <laughs> that's like the level that this guy is in terms of wanting no oversight from government so like he's he's pretty far down that path this was painful to read i would yeah. say this whole saga yeah. this was just painful to read because i was so i, I mean it, you know that's the classic argument of separating the art from the artist in some ways i think when you look at situations like this as someone that really thought that this guy did incredible work with crew like on a game level when it comes to valor mm -hmm. but also, when you look at this, you have to be like, holy two head, holy two head moment, because like, because it just regardless of any of the scientific or political like things about this, how the fuck were you planning to continue with your career? Like, especially when you go to countries like, like, because also he was signed to a Brazilian team, supposedly those talks have ended, like, or not signed, but he was in late team, late, like age talks. Yeah. And that's done because he can't get into the country to, to do his job. And that's yeah. going to be a consistent theme when he won't get vaccinated. So that's a one problem. And B also just with South America in general, they have very rigorous vaccination government programs down there actually it's one thing that their public health is actually very good at is vaccinations particularly in brazil so i just don't understand where the logic was coming at any point here for jason statham 2.0 i don't know where like where where any of this is coming from but well, it's, it, just... it's not complete stupidity though when he went to brazil the airline was unaware of the new um restrictions that brazil had put into place he was unaware of it and the team was unaware of it so it wasn't like he flouted anybody's rules or tried to get away with it or something like that he just genuinely thought I'm not ill. I, I've taken a PCR test. I know I haven't got COVID, so I should be able to travel to Brazil because that's previously how it's worked. And they recently changed it so that you have to be fully vaccinated in order to even travel and get into the country. Mm. So he was caught unawares by that because it was such a recent update. And I can empathize with that. You know, I, I, it, things are very difficult to keep on top of, but you didn't need to have that issue. Yeah. 
You just didn't have to. You just didn't have, and also the thing is, it still wouldn't change the fact that even at the time before they had changed the rules, there was going to be so many other restrictions in other countries that potentially Valorant events could be taking place at and things like that. I mean, where Germany is just, just needed. Germany's just changed their ruling because of the Omicron going around that you now need a vaccine, I think, to enter. It used to be people were saying in the comments to this news, they were like, well, how did why did Riot let him even attend champs? It's like, well, Riot are going by the country's jurisdiction of which they're hosting the event, which is Germany at the time. They just required a negative COVID test, I think, and like two weeks quarantine if you weren't vaccinated, because there's a lot of countries that still their vaccination programs are like not in full swing, I guess. Uh, I don't and think it's, that's... it's also not unreasonable to like have events running where you have to have negative tests in order to enter. You can have trust in the tests mm -hmm. to work, right? That's not being irresponsible is to, you know, everyone has to have a PCR. They go in, they have rapid antigen tests before they play. You know that these people, or at least you have high levels of confidence that everybody does not have COVID and therefore it's not going to spread through. But it's just that people are getting more strict about it because it's becoming even more of a problem and more of the strains are developing. And so it's just naturally progressing towards people being extremely cautious and that's where it interacts with uh with owners reluctance it's not even reluctance it's outright uh defiance yes. like he's he's very angry about this kind of stuff as well as he would be if he did hold his beliefs because he feels like he's being stopped in his career and he can't do anything without bending the knee but it's true I mean, I, mean I wanted to I be a NASCAR driver, and they wouldn't let me view. drive without my driver's license. It was, they were pissed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> they were pissed about that. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, Jesus. I I mean, I guess at that point, I wonder what, what will happen then, because that was, uh, yeah, it was reported to be going to Loud, which is the... The, like some some level of Brazilian super team that was being formed with Saucy and Sadhawk and mm -hmm. uh, Aspas and Pancada and less and uh, I mean I wonder what's going to happen to that project now and then what well, I mean will they just end up going back to Crew I suppose I I, I don't I don't know I mean, I maybe guess. not I don't know I don't know I, uh, it uh... he might have limited the other, the other part opportunities. Of it too is would you want to pick him up if you don't think he's going to be able to attend Masters events in the right. future? Right, I mean, that is a, that is a real future Masters events might have this question. ruling. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the guy can't Just help the, you if that's the case. With the state of the world and uh, Omicron and the, you know... It's a big question as to what the circuit is even going to look like this coming mm -hmm. year. I mean, the hope was for, for things to be more open and more events, but that certainly may not uh, pan out, but... We'll have to see. Uh, over in North America, though, some some roster moves still happening, as they will be up until the VCT starts at the end of this month. But Exet have made a pretty big acquisition, getting another one of the guys from Soar, Cryocells, who was a part of the duo that was just keeping Soar on top of the like tier two circuit of him and Xander, who we talked about last week, uh, going to version one. But Exet have apparently. I don't know, I, I was seeing all types of uh, news and people discussing the buyouts and what was going on there, but no matter which way you slice it, Exet have, they've, they've, they've acquired Cryocells, he's starting in the roster, replacing Pure, their previous Jet, as their new star Jet player, and this seems like a move of just straight up firepower upgrade, yes. I mean Cryocells is, was an, he's been a demon uh, in the tier 2 circuit for the past couple months, for, for people who haven't been able to watch like some of the Nerd Street tournaments or smaller Knights tournaments, uh, things like that. He's just been insane on, on that roster. Um, and I, I know that, uh, I think Exet have kind of had their, had their eye on him for a little bit. And also, I, I think finding a jet of the caliber to replace Pure is no easy feat, because I think Pure was a really solid jet who was really mm -hmm. consistent for the team for a long time. Um, he was just never the like star hard carry a game kind of jet. He would have those few and far between, but he brought a really high level of consistency for, yes. for X set that was really respectable. He's an excellent player, um, and I think he should definitely end up on another really good team. Um, but I think that's also a testament to how much of a talent Cryocells looks to be. His stream's really funny too. Uh, if you've ever seen it, it's uh, very homoerotic. <laughs> no. And it's, uh, <laughs> I do his enjoy what? it. His stream? It's homoerotic. Yeah, that's the word I would use. He just loves to bro out with the boys. 
and uh, okay. it gets a little. I just enjoy it. I enjoy it. You know. So there you go. <laughs> All right. There. In I, what way? What do you okay. mean? It's just, it's just essentially he's just I'm doing very childish jokes about like, yo, bro, like let's kiss and make out, you know? <laughs> It'd be so funny. Yeah, kiss, like, kiss and homie. Yeah, it's just, it's just funny to just me. Just raising funny toxic stuff. masculinity one step at a time. Yeah, yeah I just find it funny, Every especially because counts. it's uh, he's he just does it with like very macho, like radiant players a lot, you know, and like he just makes fun of them. It's just funny. It's a funny yeah. stream. I. I, I there've been so many things about these guys buyouts, right? From yep. uh, the Saw team <laughs> with Cryosells and Xander. I mean, this guy is nuts. Um, so you can understand why he would command a large buyout, and Exit have actually decided to pay for it. I've got this like sick feeling that somebody, it might not be Exit in this situation, but somebody is going to end up paying the bag for a nuts jet player. Just as Jet gets nerfed, someone's gonna do it at some point. I'm, I don't know whether it's gonna happen here, but someone's gonna drop yeah. like 100k, 150k <laughs> for a bonkers Jet player, and then Jet gets nerfed, and they're just shite. You know, I was, <laughs> it's gonna I, happen. Was, I was thinking the same thing, but then I mean, Jet's just not getting nerfed, is she? She'll just, Jet will simply <laughs> never be nerfed. So funny, but also this guy is a Jet one trick. Not gonna happen? Yeah, he's, no. He's uh, nice. no, but that that is primarily what he's been playing as as of late. Um, yeah. but you know, when you, when you have players that look as talented as he does, you never feel that they're limited to one agent just because they primarily play it, you know, yes. like they, they have the talent to be able to, to make that switch. I, I do want to talk about though, with VCC starting in like what, four weeks or so, three, four weeks. Soon, I think. Um, yeah, pretty soon. I just want to talk about exit generally yeah uh, at this point Dude. because this looks like a really dangerous roster except, i'm stoked for X except honestly. we're yeah i mean we talked a lot about uh their progression through the through the year and especially the the turning point really being when def joined the roster um and how that changed the way that the team especially was approaching attack sides their attack halves were so much better they look to be in that clear like top four in fourth uh, around the time of Berlin. And then they fell a little bit short of that top four when it came to the LCQ um, behind like Rise and, and Cloud9, but they still had a pretty high finish. Mm -hmm. um, and now they're heading into this year with, at the end of the year, making some just just some excellent roster moves. I mean, they, they bring in Def, super experienced in-game leader, Zekin, young, crazy talent, and now Pure, another young, crazy talent, and they have two solid supports in Aaron and BCJ as well. I mean, they have they have put together a pretty nasty roster in, in the in the second half here of uh, 2021. Yeah. I think this is exactly what you need. Like, you look at the top teams and champs that ended up finishing pretty high up, and, like, uh, a tremendous amount of firepower from one player will get you pretty far. But the mix, I, I just have a lot of faith in Exet as a team, especially out of a lot of the North American teams, that they have a good structure, a good idea of what they want out of their players, and a good idea of how to play the game. Um, because, uh, yeah, in my opinion, the difference between a lot of the teams that champs that performed well and the ones that didn't was that prep that went in, the underlying prep work. And I think Exet are that kind of team where they respect that element of the game. But now they've got the, the, the firepower of cryo cells added. They're looking scary. I think this is potentially a year where you could see just exit really before they were kind of punching trying to reach the upper section of the na teams yeah. for a lot of the of last year and obviously that was like a gradual improvements but i think this could be the year where they finally break into it and they're just going to be staying there as one of the staples of top teams in north america you would have had them at the sixth spot i think coming out of lcq right because they they were fourth pretty pretty solidly fourth i think and then they dropped underneath your rise and your cloud nines yeah. or if you wanted to you know i mean that i kind suppose of thing, so. it in in the off season here it just depends on what you make of 100 thieves and whatever exactly. they're doing with yeah exactly. we don't know what 100 what? thieves are doing still i mean it's we know they have what angles. 100 thieves up to yeah i mean who knows what 100 thieves are up to but it's probably if i was to put a bet on i'd probably bet under you know like under over does 100 thieves look better than their previous roster i'm probably gonna go under on that uh, but I mean, who knows? We still it still remains to be seen. But just gut feeling, it doesn't feel like it's going to be easy for them to make an upgrade on that previous squad. Um, and Exec clearly have made an on paper upgrade to what's going on. 
in addition to that, they should have been able to still build out their repertoire of strats because you should be able to slot in cryo cells fairly easily mm -hmm. to pure as spot. I think the jet for jet swap tends to be the easiest to yeah. implement into a strat book because they're the ones that have the most individual freedom anyway. And your role is generally quite similar between teams. Obviously, some jets play very differently, but it's rare that you swap like a uh, like a yay for a defo or something you know like you don't swap jets that have that different a, a style you're you're trying to just get a jet that does more here with cryo cells so it should be a fairly simple swap they should have had more time to be able to work on the depth of their uh strategy work on their defensive sides this this looks kind of nasty you could see them get up to potentially they could punch for third or higher yeah, like you could, I really you could start so. to see some strong results out of Exet. Yeah, I I, I absolutely agree. I, I think they're I think they're looking like a top three team, and I think that also just the moves that they've made in this past in these past few months are some good long term moves as well. Like Zekin and Cryocells are players that you would think will be around for a while, just given you know that they're they're younger um, and they have so much talent. Those are the kind of players that they can, you know, build the the Exet Valorant brand around for for years. That will be relevant top players in the in the game for years, so long as you know they keep they keep playing. I guess. Um, yeah, I, I think these are some great moves by Exet. I'm excited to to watch them. Um, but uh, I, I actually did want to say I, I just remembered. I don't think we actually did talk about Hundred Thieves getting Eccles because that happened just after the episode last week. So if we could slot that in, that is pretty relevant, uh, which is that 100 Thieves announced Eccles into their roster, who was a European IGL that uh, initially played for Team Liquid ages was, was ago. Was he announced? I thought I it was just a report. I, I haven't seen anything uh, announced. I thought it was pretty official. It's not, um, it's not on VLR or Liquipedia currently. I'm, I'm, looking, at, uh, I'm looking at the news, and I think it was a report by George Getz. Yeah. Hmm. I don't. I don't see anything official. But I mean, reported. I mean, George has been correct on. So I mean, we could still talk these. about it. Yeah, I've seen. You know. uh, I'm. I mean, it looks like this is pretty much confirmed. That was the impression I was under that it was. It was just confirmed. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I do think it's it's relevant that we could talk about it at least just for for a, a moment here. Um, but yeah, Eccles was the IGL for Liquid for a while, and then IGL for uh, NIP before they came to Brazil. But yeah, d are you guys excited about this move? Are you excited about 100 Thieves right now at all? No. Uh, no. Yeah. They I'm also they, they posted some like bait tweet to the, I mean maybe it wasn't bait but I think it was like Ethan or something posted some some tweet where you know it's like the rubbing hands or the contract signed or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was but people were speculating that they'd finalized their fifth player as well. I just don't see people available mm -hmm. on the market who would be able to what? look this good. Also, What's didn't that? they also tangentially say that like Seven Wait, what does that say? Them. What does that mug what, say? My, so my mug it. says stock market genius. <laughs> <laughs> in like in impact, impact font. font. Uh, uh, Atrocious. Yeah, yeah but Bird wasn't looking at that. He was looking at something else. No, he was just trying to... Sorry. I read the derailed cut. it by looking at a mug. Uh, uh, <laughs> Go on, Josh. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this question to everybody. Yeah. Is Eccles a better IGL co player combo? You know what I mean? Where it's like you're, not, you're taking into account their IGL and, and you're taking into account their skill in the server. Is he better than Steel or Nitro? No. I and them. No. Unless there is some just. In the, unless there is some quality that we just simply don't know because we're not on the team and we're not listening to the comms and we don't know what it's like to play with Steel or Nitro and maybe they, the players don't align with their style of leadership or, or their personalities, unless it's something like that. If I feel like if you're looking at strictly the gameplay and, I mean, kind of being a bit results-based. And how the team perform as well. Yeah, it's just <laughs> surely not right maybe I, I don't think there's a world in I mean, which definitely okay. not nitro nitro was a world-class yeah. player and the fact that he's yeah. gone is a huge blow for for 100 thieves nitro was uh, legitimately yeah. might have been the best smokes player in the game i really think he was and they lost him <laughs> i mean that that is a rough blow for them to try and deal with how do you replace a player of that quality i mean maybe you could 
you could argue maybe if you want. I could see someone trying to argue for Eccles over Steele. I would not either. So, I wouldn't either. But, but I'm sure what some if, people may, but definitely not Nitro. Entertain me a little bit here. Thinking about a history of 100 Thieves where Steel, they had disagreements within the team about what they wanted to prep for and run. Like when they were running the KO comps and then switch back to more default stuff. Um, and then Nitro comes in as well, but obviously Nitro, I think, had probably plans to return to CS at some point, I imagine, during that tenure. What if this is just 100 Thieves looking for a IGL that they know is going to be able to work with the... They've got a pretty big coaching staff, right? I'm not misremembering this. Their coaching staff with analysts is pretty big. Two or three. They right, which is way up, more than most of the teams. Much. I mean, some teams don't even have I one. I mean, they have... Don't they only have... I mean, Jovi they promoted Jovi demoted, to the head right? coach. Yeah. Oh, did Fro oh, because they lost because Frost. Frost. Yeah, so I don't yeah. think they have that that big of a staff anymore. Well, how right. big is that? They previous they previously had three. They had Frost, they had Boy, and then they had Jovi. Another. Yeah, and they're all Jovi. so currently the only people that they have that specifically competitive okay. operations in terms of like the team strategy is Jovi. Okay, because so, everyone else so is ignore, just managers. Ignore that aspect then, but I th I feel like this might be a pickup where Eccles was previously under Liquid. And Liquid strike me as a kind of team where there's probably a heavy back and forth and a lot of respect shown to the coaching staff in general in terms of the ideas that they want to put forward. Like the coaches in Liquid, like Sliggy and the analysts that they work alongside, I imagine a lot of back and forth goes between them and Eccles under that kind of environment might be more of an attractive pickup as an IGL because they know they're not going to be butting heads as much. This might be an important factor that they're taking into account is that they want somebody that they can work with and work with the coaches they pick up as well. I think you might be 10 head in it a bit there. I think I, it might but, just be but I think that's, as, well, I think, this, this is, I think this is Bren got specific with the liquid thing, but I think that I think that you're making a relevant point, though, which is kind of what I was just saying, that it's like, unless there's, it's a factor that we don't know because we're not in the comms, and they just but, work better with the guy. Um, but isn't it like the simplest answer here then. is often the truth, and the simplest answer is Eccles commands a low salary and no yeah. buyout because yeah. nobody's particularly interested in him in Europe compared to the IGLs in NA who are like, what, uh, Xander... Um, uh, odorous. Um, the, uh, who, who else help anybody? <laughs> there's, not, there's not that many IGLs. I, don't know. In I mean, steel, but steel signed, so I yeah, mean, I, steel doesn't I, I, exactly. I, I, so I don't like, know all the. I don't know the. But do you the know what I mean? Like, it feels like, like a pickup where it's more to do with the availability and it um, certainly does seem to be a big attached. factor. But at the same time, see the. That does seem like an obvious answer, and I'm sure that that, is, that has to be one of the factors, but you're also talking about 100 Thieves who are willing to spend so much on, on Ethan and getting players over from CS. So yeah. they might, they it's might kind have changed of the strategy, that, though, yeah. coming into 2022. Maybe, I, I, was, but, I just wanted to go down the thought process no, yeah, and the timeline sure. to try and justify it you know what i mean find some sort of 10 head reason it's probably not true it's probably not the case none of us know the internal dynamics of these teams but just judging from the way steel was removed from the team and what the, the they were saying was like they didn't agree with the vision and whatnot i imagine 100 thieves franchise the org they might want um they might want players that are a bit more willing to work together you know i mean also i feel like the steel thing Though with Nitro gone, like it could have just been a specific clash of personalities with O2, since that seemed to be the revolving oh, sure. things. Like have been the clash yeah. between Nitro and Steel, even though there was like team elements to it. But we, we I also know. feel like they're just possibly a, looking for an experienced IGL that is available that's not super expensive as well, which is a big part of the thing. Like he's yeah. Eccles has had some success in the past, yeah. obviously, and he's been competing at the top level for a while. So I do think there is like when you think of the market of NA talents that Josh was putting forward, and that's not all of them, obviously, but. When you think about just experienced players on the market that are available that won't have crazy buyouts, Eccles probably tops the list because of the cost to performance ratio. You know, I guess. I, feel. I guess that's a, that's a, yeah. that's pretty rough, though. That but is pretty rough. The thing is, though, yeah. It and but it feels rough because we're talking about a hundred thieves and they had steel and nitro. I mean, exactly. And specifically, again, I, I mean, just nitro was to me the best smoke player when he was playing. How do you replace? I mean, no one can really replace that in the in the immediate sense, can they? Um, I mean, I think Ethan possibly could. Ethan's smokes looked really good. The problem is, he, he, no one can no one can replace that plus the IGLing. 
Yeah. And then on top of that, they need to find a, a, a fifth player as well. I mean, obviously the Hundred Thieves core that they still have is amazing. Like the Austin and Ethan duo was the, one of the main reasons that they won so many of the games that they did win. Those guys are really good. And and honestly, at the latter half of the year, I thought Hiko was playing uh, pretty well at, at, towards the, the end of the year. Um, but why? You're shaking your head, Josh. Do you not think that uh, Austin and Ethan were a top-level duo? No, of course they were. But the pro- no, they, they really were. Of course they were. And in terms of success, but it's it's a hard duo to build around because Asuna doesn't naturally want to play that jet solo duelist role. And the meta at the moment seems to be that you have like one solo duelist, one flex, right? Like you have one person that carries all of the duelists and they must be elite level at jet if your team has aspirations of getting to masters, winning masters, that kind of thing. Asuna seems like he wants to try and fill the flex role to me, which is also where Ethan looks like he's the best, you can put Asana into the jet role, but if you're rebuilding the team, you would want to try, in my opinion, to get Asana to flex, bring in a star jet player, and then have Ethan fill maybe smokes where he can be an outweightedly good smokes player compared to the opposition that you're playing against. That to me is like your your potential that you could reach with this roster. And I just don't see how you can reach that with with the team that they're putting together, I don't think he goes particularly good. I mean, sure, like the guy had like nuts clutches at Berlin, sure, and like he played pretty well towards the end of the year. Is he a top player on Sova in the world? No. Is he a top player in, on Sova in North America even? That's pretty debatable, I would say, when you have other really good Sova players. So you're really just building around a core of Ethan and Asana when. Asana's great, but he himself might want to give up that jet roll to somebody else. It's just a mess, man. It's not a great situation to be in trying to rebuild this roster when you've lost such key talents. I think they're in a losing scenario. Do you, do you, are coming for you. You just do, said Hiko's not that good. They're coming for you. I mean, right oh, now. I can hear them. Come in. Here we go. Sideshow hates Hunter Thieves. Sideshow hates Hunter Thieves. Thieves. Here it comes. Once again. <laughs> here it goes. Once again, Sideshow, <laughs> Once again, Sideshow <laughs> is here to hate 100 Thieves. Uh... I, I do want to ask though, Josh. Then, if they could, could they not just could they not find a star jet and plug that star jet into this team with Eccles? Um, I don't know what Eccles has been playing recently. In terms, I, mean, I guess of that's what the question, been, right? Like, if, like if Eccles it, just played kind of Sentinel, role? that would make it easy, but. Does yeah, he, possibly. Does he have comfort Eccles on that role? Is he good at that role? Yeah, I, I mean, I Eccles is not a sentinel player historically and also yeah. might struggle to IGL from that position. If he hasn't IGL from that before, it's not a position where you really get information. It's a passive information gathering position. With such a different team, maybe the information flow would be rough to him and he would struggle to like call it his best. He's not a fragger, so you can't... I mean, like in some sense, sentinel would be good for him because you're not required to get a ton of frags. But I mean, like... It's Eccles is really a smokes player, so yes. then which is a potential. Okay, if you have him in smokes, problem. then where does Ethan go if he's not playing yeah. flex? Because so you can't really if you put in a star jet here, then you shunt Eccles down the line to the point where he's playing Sentinel, and you're already not going to get fragging out of Eccles. We all know this. He's not a fragging IGL. That's one of the reasons that he got removed from Liquid in the first place is that he just wasn't putting up numbers. Uh, it's it's rough, man. I don't think your expectations should be high for this team. And if they do blow it out of the water by somehow un- just unlocking Ethan and Asana, then I think that's credit to Ethan and Asana rather than just having blind faith 100 Thieves are going to be good because they're 100 Thieves. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, one other team that made a, a roster move in, or well, I mean, not even a team that made a roster move. The team ceased to exist. That's Immortals. But Gangsta, a name that we just haven't really heard much of in, in the last, I don't know, like the second half of the year. Um, but he's left Immortals and he's joined Knights, who are just one of the teams that play every single tournament that they can possibly play. They're the super grinder team that, that has made 900 roster moves over this year and has just cycled through a ton of talented players. But yeah, Immortals no longer exists. Um, and, I, and I believe that's in part because also, uh, you know, like MIBR, they're going to have a team in, in Brazil built around GTN and Immortals NA Valorant. 
will no longer be around. Gangsta was one of the super talented players on that team that had been on the team since the beginning. Yep. Had been really consistent for them. Rock solid Sova. And probably due to his loyalty for the team or potentially if no other team ever really looked at getting him, which sounds odd. He just kind of flew under the radar. Yeah. He just flew yeah. under the radar being really good on Immortals for like two years or a year and a half. A long time. He was always good. Yeah, he was always good. I, um, I mean, knowing Immortals, the way this company operates is... Uh, they be, I do feel bad for Gangster where he's just been stuck in this position where it feels like he's essentially just been in limbo on the Immortals roster towards the tail end of 2021 when he is a good player and he probably should have been getting experience in that time. But this is a good pickup. I like it. I mean, I think he was always pretty underrated. Um, typically when teams, I think, are looking to like shore up their uh, their team and acquire players... If the buyouts are large, then I, th I feel like in general, across the board, most teams are willing to spend money on a player with a large buyout if they're adding a lot of firepower in like the duelist role, just because it's easy to translate the, the success of it. But yeah, in Gangster's case, I'm glad that he's joining a team. I'm glad he's going to be playing more matches. Um, I hope that it's kind of, I mean, when was the last time he played a match? As well, what was his match history? I, I mean, Moore's been playing a that. lot of tier two tournaments, trialing players from all across the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they have been doing. <laughs> Mortals were doing some wacky stuff in the past six months, man. But Let's see. So his last match. This is when he's was, playing on nights now, right? Yeah, before nights. Yeah, before nights was in November. November. Okay, so he hasn't quite been in limbo, but it's just been kind of. I, I feels like the roster never had legs or the the backing that it needed from the company side to succeed and so that's kind of why i feel mentally about immortals but i'm glad he's on a new roster i think he's a good player and i hope he has a, a long career ahead of him because he certainly showcased that he had a lot of talent early on when the game was first you know kind of getting its uh, getting its footing i think immortals have been quite stupid in terms of how they've operated their organization's uh, involvement with valorant over the last year and a half first of all they had like joint coaching staff between overwatch and valorant and then they just decided to completely drop their overwatch uh, side of it uh, side of things which i imagine made things less interesting for the coaching staff in general because gunber ended up moving completely i mean he's no longer with immortals at all he's gone back to overwatch for a totally different team and then packing 10 is one of the final remaining members here who was presumably desperately trying to you know rotate people and try and trial people and that kind of stuff uh, and if you had if you had maintained packing 10 and gumba and kept this idea of immortals being a farm team you could have tried to outcompete other teams and actually sell buyouts at a position where that would have been really um profitable for your team at the moment there's a real lack of north american talent available at a reasonable price if you're able to find talents diamonds in the rough which packington and gumba have proven that they're able to do that even players that didn't look great on immortals looked great when they moved on to other places which indicates to me that they have an excellent eye for just raw talent of people that are going to be great in the future if you have those kind of people available to your organization and there's a um, an economy f for being able to sell upwards and the chain which there is at the moment it's just the people are pricing buyouts too high that's amazing for immortals you hold on to gunther and packing 10 find those new talents and sell them and try and undercut other people in the market and you, you're going to make really good money uh, you you should be able to run a sustainable situation the mibr is not a bad idea either going and investing in brazil because you're potentially going to be able to find a good roster that can make it to masters events and get big eyeballs on your brand for way cheaper but it definitely feels like gumber and packet 10 could have actually run a profitable situation within the tier 2 circuit during valorant because they had that talent of being able to pick out people and instead it just seems like immortals have decided as an entire organization eh, fuck it we don't really like esports we'll go and make money by selling software to people at PC farms in Michigan. South America or something. No, in Michigan because they moved they what? moved like all of their operations yeah. to the Great Lakes region, essentially. All their North American operations has been moved to like Michigan. Essentially. Yeah, they, they genuinely they put out a press release. They put out a press release like a year ago saying we don't really feel like investing in esports is profitable at all. So we're just we're just working, we're really focusing on our like software development. They they bought out a bunch of 
things like um, products that they could make money on in the future rather than you know like an an investment into an esports organization where you're really all about growth for the future it was like a product that they could actually it was something of value currently that they could sell to people so they they look like they're making a full 90 degree pivot away from esports yeah. huh all right well that's yeah, an interesting tale with immortals very interesting tale <laughs> yep well best of luck down in brazil uh in in uh in other news what is oh yeah 40 people got arrested what's going on here 40 people got arrested <laughs> What, what, what's what's, what's occurring? What a headline from this, from this I mean, Turkish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, was... I actually this is actually a great headline for the outfit. I actually look like a news cat. Like forty people have been arrested from the Turkish Twitch money laundering scheme or eleven. Like what, I, I I don't what what who has the scoop? This this was <laughs> an article posted scoop on all these arrests. So the, the Turkish police ended up uh, arresting forty people involved in the Twitch money laundering scheme. There wasn't really any information <laughs> gleaned. There was yeah. no names. It's just an update to what was going on. Um, but yeah, action being taken by, it seems like the police, may, maybe Twitch are also, t Twitch Turkey are working with the police in some capacity. I imagine they are um, to give them necessary information. But Yeah, it's mostly been streamers, supposedly, of the most, of the 40 that have been detained. It's mostly been streamers, supposedly, but then we had uh, this tweet essentially saying that it's been a couple Valorant players in the Turkish scene have had their houses raided, but it doesn't say if they've been detained or anything like that. They so were looking for the bits. They were looking yeah, for they, the big bags of bits. The, they were going to fling open a chest and they're going to fly out like Legend of Zelda. They're just like, <laughs> <laughs> they were breaking ceramic pots in their house. They're like, we got into the bits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a thing. That's happened. Yeah, yeah that not is... much more to really add to it other than yeah other than it's a developing story and we'll keep <laughs> it updated as we get more information yeah essentially we're just baiting <laughs> does does this mean seen it i don't know we don't know but we don't know i mean think yeah, about yeah, it yeah. just let the let the thoughts tantalize yourself and give us clicks yep i mean let the thoughts a, slow but, roast but seriously on that front i mean his brother was heavily involved in it his brother was yeah. described as being a middleman that was involved in getting a lot of streamers involved into it if there's any evidence that connects him to that you'd imagine that his brother would be in some serious shit if there's 40 people already arrested that's not just on the um uh, i don't know how to describe it but like there's two layers here right there's the people that have the stolen credit cards and then there's the streamers there's yeah. there's two different layers to this scam and those 40 people are not all going to be involved in the um in, in the acquisition of stolen credit cards some of them are going to be middle people and some of them are going to be streamers surely i don't think it was I don't think it was like 40 people going around Turkey robbing credit cards from people all looking for streamers. Like there's, there's got to be some penetration through the different layers there. So you'd imagine that they'd be interested in at least investigating that aspect. So it, it's got to be stressful at the very least for seeing it, wondering whether or how far this is going to go. Yeah. Well, in other news... Players are complaining about the 2022 format. I mean, that's, that's more than people not really arrested. a headline, yeah. to be honest. No. This is sort of, uh, I mean, this is a standard. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, there are, there are criticisms and uh, comments and thoughts and discussion to be, to be held about the 2022 format. The complaint specifically that is being leveled that I'm seeing quite often is about how the, uh, the open qualifier stage only has one one qualifier so if you don't make it you, you're just you're done until until the next when, when is the next opportunity to uh, the next opportunity so if you fail on, if you don't make top 12 in the first open you're out till like may like early may and if you don't make it in open two you're literally done for 2022 in terms of vct what well, does the, yeah so yeah. How, you do they do, have how do they do how do they do lcq chances. in terms of the what team lcq is based on points right yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm assuming you get points from being in the top 12 only. Right? You have to be so, in the yes, top 12 only, yes. competing There's in only the other one BCP. open qualifier per yeah. Masters event, and there's only yes. two Masters events per year. So yes. that's rough. Pretty rough. Pretty rough. Players is, are not happy about that. At least but we'll I have think all... the third-party tournaments at the end of the year. But yeah, after I, the VCT event is Just done, raising right? an eyebrow. You know? Yeah, I, I, no, just, I, yeah, yeah third-party tournaments. Yeah. 
yeah. going to be plenty. I mean, they'll have Nerd Street opens to play. I mean, I listen, <laughs> Nerd Street have been they have been keeping the the tier 2 and non-VC team circuit afloat with their weeklies that uh yeah, like they, all the they really team, have. all the tier 2 teams play in every week and all the nights tournaments as well. Like those tournaments have been crucial for the circuit. I mean, without oh, it's those... a good job as well, actually. It's a good job that Nerd Street have been doing that because T1's been dog shit. So it's a good, you know, yeah, if they want a spot in the franchise out. system, they got it. They really have that's, to. That's what I mean. It's like, Street, you know, like... <laughs> that's the tinfoil hat theory, right? It's because Nerd Street are owned by Comcast, T1's owned by mm, Comcast. The deeper, darker, criminal and the, link. the concept being that Nerd Street are doing all this good work for Riot and it should, in the end, yeah. pay dividends when it comes to, but, I mean, to be fair, franchising, I, which is fair? the rumor. I feel I feel like that's kind of fair in the fact that like if you show that you are a good partner to work with and are interested in investing in the scene, yeah. you probably should be rewarded. Yeah, right? definitely. Like, yeah, like, absolutely. I think that's just, like, I'm not no, saying it's, not, it's under. It would be like anything, okay, yeah. like good work, Nerd Street. You've done excellent work, but uh, this is actually all going to Immortals. Immortals, come on down. <laughs> 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 just like, yeah, just like, you know, like it'd be I do. I do want to point out though. Having one open qualifier per Masters is not necessarily a bad thing if that open qualifier is very thorough. I don't think that's a terrible right. situation. You mean to in be. terms of uh, seeding? Mm, not just seeding. I mean, in terms of like maybe it's a double elimination once you get deeper into the bracket. So right. once people get towards like round of. I don't know, sixteen or something. It becomes double elimination, so it's extremely thorough. You you don't you can't just get unlucky with your seeding and run into a good team. You have to get unlucky with your seeding and lose twice in double bo threes. You know what I mean? Like a really yes. rigorous format to be able to be eliminated. Yes. I read in a tweet somewhere, which I'm not going to be able to source for you guys, that the EMEA format was like single elim bo three the entire way through. Was that for something else? Or I don't know. I mean, I don't know whether I'm mistaken but here. Also, I'm, I'm, I'm on holiday. Can, but... After every with EMEA, surely we haven't just gone back to the Dark Ages, right? We haven't lost technology and, and gone back to the caveman stone yeah. and fire times where we have BO1. At least it's not BO1. Oh, yeah. I guess not BO1. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's BO3s, but it's still single limb. I think so, as well, like... take into consideration how um, it feels like 2022 is condensed down to fit within the neat little esports package that Riot Games have and with those time constraints I, I don't know like each region is handling it differently and so they might also have time constraints in terms of what formats they can run I don't think that's the correct way to do it. I think what you were saying Josh as long as it's thorough then uh, yeah, I mean, if you, all should be good. But if you can try and squeeze out an extra week on the front to be able to add a double elimination portion to not screw over some teams that get bad seeding, there is no way you're going to be able to seed these tournaments effectively. You can give preferential seeding to people that did well last year, but some of the teams are going to be very different. And yeah, like, the rosters aren't some, the same, and it's a huge yeah, offseason. Like, how do you seed this? Totally irrelevant. And I, I don't know whether this situation is actually going to arise, but let's say, for example, 100 Thieves really revamped their roster, and so 100 Thieves still exist, but they have a very different roster. And then you had, like, let's say Sentinels decided not to continue their contracts, and instead they got picked up by FaZe or something, right? I'm just throwing that out there. Would FaZe get the points from Sentinels players, or would FaZe get the points, the like seeding from FaZe's organization? You know, th there's no precedent to how this would work within Valorant in terms of actually seeding towards the next year. And if it's not based on the players, you're going to get wonky seeding all over the place if there are actually big moves within, uh, within the scene. And that's maybe more applicable to a scene like Brazil or something, where it seems like there's some massive changes happening with the top teams. Sure. Yeah, I mean, also on top of that, just think about with this proposed format too. If this format was this was how it worked for last year, Sentinels would not have got to Iceland because they lost to BBG. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, if it, if it was single uh, single Olympio threes, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is it is definitely a, a worry, but. Yeah, I, I mean, I suppose it just depends on, uh, yeah, the, the double a limb is kind of the, the crux of the, the potential issue, right? I mean, that, yeah. could, and that it could fix um, a potential issue deeper in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, or even you, you know, there are there are different ways of doing it too. You could like run a single LM up to round of sixteen, and then run a Swiss system or something like that, right? There's like there's almost endless ways of being able to um, create systems like this. It's just based on time and creativity. 
Yeah. And I, I'm sure they're lacking on time. Too, because like so much of the community last year felt like it was really hard to keep up with all the VCT stuff yeah. happening. And then it's like, well, we've reduced it. But then it's like, well, now we've reduced it too much. So I think it's just this... It's like ranked, right? Where everyone's like, oh, you need to make the RR requirement stricter for like, you know, just keep everything tighter in terms of matchmaking. And it's like, oh, now I'm always getting deranked and blah, 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 blah. Like, it's just, there's always this very careful balancing yeah. act of how do you please it, everybody. It definitely, they definitely needed to, to lessen the amount of qualifiers and make it more straightforward, which I think this is, because it's just, you have, the, you have the open qualifier, it goes into the round robin stage, goes into the playoffs. I, I think that's pretty, it's a lot more concise than, than last year, which is definitely a positive, but I think you're completely correct, Josh, and that, that just means that that one <laughs> open qualifier stage needs to be thorough. So the best 12 teams, you know, to, to uh, obviously it'll never be perfect, but to, to a really high degree, it's correct as to what the top 12 teams actually are when you get to the next stage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But and also round robin snooze, I sleep. I'm not going to rant about it again because I did last time, but I snooze. <laughs> so what do we want? from Valorant in 2022. That's, we, 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 can, we can talk about everything we dislike. But what do we want? The format and the game? Anything? I think mostly the format. Anything. Probably, right? just, oh, anything. It's just the Valorant 2022 wish list. What, the, the year, it's a new year. Yep. It's a new me. Yep. 2021, yep. got Don't my mind right. Yep. 2022, getting my money right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> what do we want from Valorant this year? Uh, in-game event, Icebox, B-Site, blown up. Opposing Drumstones, <laughs> yes, Ultimate see, we're on the same page. No, I've, I've been, Cinematic. Yeah, that's what, I've, strikes connecting. that's what I've been saying for fucking... I've been saying this for, for years. I, it's been my crackpot little... And everyone's like, oh, I'll go back to Fortnite. Dude, bring Fortnite to Valorant. Because what <laughs> they need to do is have a cinematic event where the map changes. And yep. if they did that and yep. destroyed... I think it would be so cool if they released the next lore video and it's a battle on Icebox... Uh, site on Icebox B site and the site gets destroyed by, by the Brim Nukes yep. by the, and then we just have a new site mm -hmm. and that's the new B site I would what love if, that what if it's the new teaser for the new agent where the since it's the sure. Sonic the Hedgehog agent right they run so fast that we go into an alternate <laughs> dimension where B site is changed on Icebox that's how fast we move universe so, C then, I would like instead of universe A and B universe yeah. C yeah. I like that beyond. Mm. yeah um, do, you, do you think there's I feel like um, Fortnite might have been in a unique position by um, being owned by Epic, which also makes the engine. Are they not in a better position to be able to do that kind of stuff where the, they run such incredible things within the game world? Well, I, 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 I feel like there might be a reason why other developers I mean, aren't I'm, able to do that. That's why I said as, release, a, a, cool uh, the cinematic. Release, a, release a video. Like, yeah, it could be the new right, agent trailer. Right. But, but yeah, release a cinematic video that, you know, it plays when you launch the game. Um, mm -hmm. So everybody sees it and knows what why the map has changed by, like, the lore. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, put on YouTube all that all that kind of thing. But, yeah, yeah that would be sick. Awesome. I would love that, but I would also like if they just changed the map too yeah. <laughs> just the old fashioned yeah. developer way uh, cuz that map that map needs fixing or do the thing where they take it out and add a, a new map at some mm -hmm. point this year just and revamp it. it and rotate it and bring it back in other than that though i i'm pretty pretty okay with the state of the maps um, yeah. that's that's really the only map thing i'd, I'd like to change any, any other what else is on your valor well, 2022 wish list everybody we were just talking about a format mm -hmm. um, just games with meaning because mm. those were the criticisms of the early formats in 2021 yeah. was that I felt like a lot of the games lacked meaning in terms of why are they playing this? What is the purpose? Josh is nodding so aggressively. I'm doing, I'm doing the Brent well, Coast wouldn't, wouldn't that Wouldn't that have been a... Wouldn't that, you think that's not been addressed a little bit by inherently we've reduced the amount of yes. Masters events? Yeah, so, so there is... Now, and also they added the VCT, I think, potential land events. At least some of the regions are going to be land, so we're assuming NA will Hopefully. potentially have land. yeah. The, uh, yeah, I, I think they still have still seeding games. Still seeding games at the end of the qualification of Masters. Exactly. The qu to qualify, you just have to make what troll. top four? Very troll. Top eight? What is it to to, to qualify? Top four, whatever top it is, three, whatever they decide qualifier. it is for Masters. For, for, for the qualifiers, but once you reach that point, what are you playing for at the end of it? Troll. Exactly. Money. I, troll. 
I think a lot of players don't really care that much about money. Well, I think if you make it That's a land event, though, it still adds impact, right? Like, it's like, oh, if you they won did, this event, yeah, you got a money. Are they going to make like, the qualifier you know, a land event? Well, I thought the, the challengers were going to be, but not the qualifier. I'm not sure about the qualifier. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. The plan was, well, I've heard because some of the other regions have had bad talks about the challengers being land events uh, for the, those regions. I can't mm. remember which one back this time. And then I, because I remember I got an argument on some guy on Twitter about this. I was like, well, I'd really like to see more lands. And he's like, oh, all the challenger events are going to be lands. And I was like, I just rewatched this. It was when they did their state of the yeah. like um, competitive format like, a couple months ago, I think, or a month yeah. or two ago. And I was like, well, I just rewatched the video like 12 times. I didn't see them say that. And he's like, oh, well, I I'm sure they're going to be, right? So it's just the assumption. <laughs> but who knows? Like, like, who actually knows, right? Yeah. So, I, yeah, my, my Valorant wishlist is for COVID to fuck off and we can get 10 lands a year instead of two. True. Yeah. No, that would three. be, <clears throat> that would be ideal. Yeah. I would like to see more tier one games. Um, there's just not enough of them and there just haven't been enough of them. Uh, that would be nice. I would yeah. like to see more of the tier one teams playing against each other. I mean, yeah, and games with meaning. So it kind of just goes in line with that. Anything else about the actual game itself that we really demos? Because I would like yes, oh, holy yes. shit, yeah. demos, demos oh. slash yeah, is in replays of games. Yep. would be amazing. Yep. Watching player POVs from tournaments, having the ability to like you know top down go around the map, no clip around, and, I and, think and watch. All that I think the right. format stuff seems like it's set in stone, right? Like we're yeah. we're saying this like it's a wish list. We're we're already Santa's given us coal instead of those wishes. <laughs> so fuck it. Let's let's aim for something different. Yeah. I think that one is a really good idea, but also a clash tournament kind of system. Yeah. I, I, I swear they're working on it. All God. of their communication seems like they're hinted they hinted towards it. They posted They've early things. One of the devs it. posted an early like a tweet of the mock up as well. Right. I mean, if we get that for 2022, oh, my That's heart so is going to be... If we get replays and yeah. a clash system... I, I, I'm good. I'm good. That's that's my wish list. I'm not even going to be mad that there aren't that many lands or big events between top tier teams. That's just good enough for the game to, for my heart to be happy for this year. Yeah, that would be great. I would like to... One thing I'd like to add, I would like to see an, a new smoker in the game. Give, give, get a new smoker in there, something to compete with Astra. Um... I, I would like that a lot because uh, I don't, I don't particularly want to watch just a, a year of Astra gameplay. But I also don't want to necessarily just nerf everything into the ground over mm -hmm. and over. Um, nerf jet. Eh, I'm over <laughs> it, Josh. I don't no, even I'm want to over it. Jet. I'm going to keep, keep telling them. They're going to uh, yeah, no, and it's going to be on my 2023 wish list. Instead of nerfing jet, they will. They have simply they they have added jet 2.0. And she's coming out <laughs> in like a, this month sometime, right? Yeah. Same. So, or like this month or next month. I don't know when. Because the, if I was they, to, they leaked yes. the picture and the picture's coming out. Well, I think I, I was supposed I to come out in like a week. Because it got leaked from the Twitch Prime rewards. Yeah. It was the banner. And I think that week was the 1st of February when that reward was released. So if I was to work backwards from that, maybe February is the mm. okay. date. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's just gonna be that's just gonna be new jet. Instead of I nerfing mean, jet, just, just add twenty different jets. Everyone can play a different Insta version of jet. Jet Rainer was it the new agent's called Neon? Neon. Yep. 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 Insta them. The me. chamber gets picked then because the couldn't other player who plays jet couldn't get a couldn't get a duelist they like. Yep. And then I'm I'm on Astra and I'm I'm guys guys tell me if they're on C please. <laughs> Just scrambling. I mean, it would be pretty interesting interesting scrambling in astral form. Keep yeah. making jet like duelists, though, because it's like the the classic. Do you just keep o adding overpowered things, or you try to nerf it and balance it? Right? Like if everyone's overpowered, no one is. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You're goddamn. That is right. that is a uh, a game philosophy that Dota Two has. Yeah. Yeah. They I think it's legitimately, it, and, it, and it does work in Dota. Interesting idea, but also it's different for Valorant because, like, imagine if every new agent now has mobility, so now we're not even playing attack shooter anymore. We're yeah. just playing dirty bomb or something. Oh, I'd love like that. <laughs> That'd be sick. That's, mm. that's my, I would be okay with that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, imagine if there's all backdoor Trojan horse game to just make dirty bomb two, and then all the <laughs> boomers come out on the riding lawnmowers <laughs> just to come play it. All right, let's let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. It's this time. Is what I was for. 
This is why we, uh, this is why we dressed up. This is why we're all looking nice, guys. Ah, shoot those cuffs. Shoot the, shoot the, shoot those cuffs a little bit. It's time for the Plat Chat Awards show. First up, I got, got the player of the year coming at you. Well, your mic. <laughs> That's important. Player of the year. Player of the year. Yeah. Player of the year. Um, the player of the year, as voted by the community via Upcomer, was Nats. Oh. Hmm. Well, let's see what we voted for. Because mm. these are our votes, correct? These are just our yes. votes. Yes. All right. Inventory. Everybody settle down. Settle down. <laughs> settle down. I've got in this envelope, what does this say? Oh, it says player of the year. Your nominees for the Plat Chat Valorant player of the year are Nats, Tens, Yay, Chronicle, Zeke, Kaned, and Shazam. The winner is Nats. Nats is your Platchad Valorant Player of the Year That's, 2021. that's big. That's big. That's nice. What I, it? This was a this was a tough one, honestly. There's a lot of really tough choices, but I feel yeah. like my original argument for when I eventually cast my votes. Did we get to see the vote breakdown of how we voted, by the way? Or is that, or we don't have that exactly. I mean, we can we can verbalize it. I mean, we can. I, I voted for Nats. I voted Say for what we thought. Um, I, I, I just thought he pushed Nats. the role. Like I voted for Nats as well, but I also, I thought it was really tight between him and my second was CNET. Actually, I thought you know, considering what CNET did at the beginning of the year to break out, like before Nats was even on people's radars, CNET was already better than him. Like CNET was rated higher than Nats coming all the way into Berlin, and CNET still had a great performance at Berlin and still had a great performance at Champions. He just wasn't the best at either tournament. Yeah. So I thought it was actually really close. Okay. The um. Yeah. I I've ever seen it as well, but I completely I agree with Nats. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, um, yeah. I I voted for Nats. Um. I I thought that Nats. At least it felt for me Nats was a pretty clear choice on on this one. But yeah, Cena certainly had an argument. I honestly I thought the Tens did as well, just for how dominant he was for the first half of the year. Um. And. That being said, though, one of the things, or the main thing that just sold me on Nats is that I don't think any other player has had the influence on the game as yeah. Nats. I mean, he is he has defined how to play the the Sentinel Viper role in in the game. I mean, everyone yeah, he was, innovated. Everyone, yeah, he innovated, and yeah. everyone has tried to replicate Nats um, in the second half of the year. I mean, you could just immediately see in all of the other non-VCT tournaments, like watching all the tier 2 NA games and stuff, just every Viper player, every, everyone was just trying to play like Nats. They were using his setups, they were just, it, they all just started playing like Nats. Uh, he just had so much influence on the game, so I, I just had to vote for him. But yeah, a, a lot of uh, a lot of solid nominees in that one. Uh, Kurt, if you want to pause, we're going to... All right. All right, and next up we have the Coach of the Year Award. Mm. Are they vaccinated? I wonder. <laughs> I, all right. All right. Enough laughs. We have the Coach of the Year Award. Your nominees are Aang, Sliggy, Honor, Mini, and NBS. And the winner of the Plagiat Valorant 2021 Coach Award is Aang from Gambit. What a win. God, he's so businesslike. He's in yeah, and he's he out. Really is. Yep. He really is. Rapid. He's so he's just he's just efficient. He's mm -hmm. just incredibly efficient. Much like Aang, the winner of the coach <laughs> of the year. <laughs> Much like that. Yep. Good All segue business. from myself. All Good business. Segue from myself there. But I be, I feel like this is another there were some tough ones here and for reasons previously I didn't think were gonna be tough, but also that kind of made it tougher here. And I do think that Aang um Realistically, probably when you think about the scrim schedule and just how flexible that it felt that overall that gambit was, they were so adaptable and they just managed to remain, even though they didn't win champs, 
uh, they came second and they looked really, really good even after struggling initially. So I think that's just a team that shows the benefit of having a co- good coaching structure and good uh, for and good structure in general from their coach put on them, you know? Yeah, to me, it's how, how, um, how prepared they look for every game. Their, yeah. their, their preparation, the amount of stuff they have ready to go at all times indicates to me that they have good coaching. I don't think this was a particularly close one. In my opinion, it was Eng and then some level behind Eng. I actually even had Sliggy in second place, even though Liquid have not done too much. It wasn't a results-based thing. I just think Liquid are somewhat similar in terms of having a lot of those setups, and I know that Sliggy's mm. really heavily involved in a lot of that kind of stuff, plus like good, uh, good roster moves and good um, meta adaptation kind of stuff too but i think eng just wins it almost by a landslide like gambit just looks so good all year long in terms of that level of prep yeah hard to, hard I made, to argue with yeah that. i mean i i didn't vote for eng <laughs> no, I, I had a different vote but um mbs Oops. Hmm. so ah, purely yeah. off the back of um the the kind of interview process as well and what they were talking about in terms of uh, going into champs and um, what the difference maker was for them. I think we put a lot of stock into um, the, the tactics, the, the, the prep work and everything, but being able to take a step back and look at mentality and look at the, the comfort levels of your players and understand what changes need to be made there is also incredibly important, and they recognized that, and it got them all the way in champs. Um, that's why I put, put that down, but I completely agree with Eng as well in terms of just, it's, you can't argue against the dominance they've had and how good they've looked against a variety of opponents. All right. This is a big one. Are you guys ready? What is this one? I'm nervous. It's it's the team of the year. I'm shaking. It's the team of the year. Oh. 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 Why it looks like an old oh, right, year, by the way. He looks All like right, an everyone. This is a big he looks one. like he's going to sell me a car. This is a big one. <laughs> it's the team of the year, 2021. Your nominees, Sentinels, Gambit, Ascend, Fnatic, and last but not least, Crew. Famos! The winner. The 2021 Flat Chat Award Team of the Year. All the way from Russia, it's Gambit, a unanimous winner with five votes. Yeah, but guys, guys, I, I know I know Sentinels aren't winning any award. I know Sentinels didn't win. I know Tens didn't win. Guys, stop booing. Boo. Gambit, you're a winner. Boo. Guys, come on. Boo. Boo, you dumb bull Where's bitch. Where's the hundred thieves? <laughs> oh, wait. No, that was me. <laughs> I can love 100 thieves. I can love them. <laughs> Uh, that well, was unanimous. Gambit was yeah. unanimous. I thought someone would go for Ascend because to me it is yeah. somewhat close. It's I, I don't think it's like neck and oh, neck. We, we all well, I mean, for Gambit. Yeah, it was, yeah, that was, was unanimous. That, that's, but also it doesn't show our breakdown thought percentages of like, oh, I thought this team X amount of time. It's like we only have a binary <laughs> yes or no team. Breakdown thought percentages. We all, well, you're what? saying like Josh is over there. He's talking about like it should have been close, but there's only a yes or no. It's like okay, maybe we all thought that Ascendant Gambit were close, but we can only pick one. You know, there's only one to pick. Sure, so, but also, wow. what kind of stat would that be? Thought breakdown percentage. How much time did you spend just thinking Connor is about an just independent Ascend? thinker? Just, just measure the brain waves, and like each wave corresponds <laughs> to d- different teams. Obviously, think about that, neuroscientist. Get on that. Of course, get on that so we can get the, the brain wave reader for decisions for flat well, chat. Uh, Okay, then uh, then what what aside from Gambit, because with it being unanimous, I mean uh, we could just repeat ourselves all day about why Gambit are good. But uh, what uh, where were your brainwaves going? Any other teams? Like who was the second team for your brainwaves? Who who could get uh, the uh, honorable uh, mention? Uh, even it has to be Ascend, man. I, yeah, uh, there yeah. isn't. It's not even close, actually. The second and third, in my opinion, like Ascend are clearly the second best team after they've been able to. The thing, the reason why Gambit are clearly the first place team, though, in my opinion, is the level of consistency. They win the CIS Masters. That's the best they could do at the beginning of the year. They weren't allowed into EMEA. I don't think they would have won it had they been there. I don't think they would have beaten Ascend, who were the winners in EU. But at the time, they were still a damn good team. And then they don't quite be, uh, they're not quite able to get to, um, 
uh masters 2 but that's they were third in emea at masters 2 they only lost to Fnatic, who ended up being second place in Reykjavik. i mean if they had made it to Reykjavik, they would have gone deep in the tournament they they would have they were that good um and then obviously win berlin second of champions they're just in, insanely consistent all year long whereas ascend kind of they 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 were like 10th in emea for masters 2 so that's a pretty big knock on their record, but the rest of the year, I mean, they win the EU and then they win champions, so they've got to be up there, surely. Where would Sentinels go, actually, though? Third? I think Pro so. Probably, I mean, right? I mean, it they... probably would yeah. be third, just because, like, unless you really want to make an argument that the crew spectacle is such an incredible thing because they come from a region with particularly LATAM, but also even when we look at the international results of Brazil, that just had such poor overall talent compared to EMEA and NA that like especially the quality of teams but it had, probably has to be Sentinels with how dominant their run early on was you know probably has to be yeah I think they have to be in third all right this one I genuinely I don't know what is winning this it's the match of the year now I mean there were 98 we had we had matches I didn't even know were played on this list. <laughs> so, uh, I have no idea what direction this one's going. Oh, how do we decide? I guess we have a, a we, there's a winner, so I guess we've already decided, so never mind. The tension. All right. All right. All right. The match of the year. The 2021 Plat Chat Valorant match of the year. Your nominees. Holy shit. Or <laughs> Sen vs. Fnatic, the Reykjavik Finals. Gambit vs. Send, the Champions Finals. Gambit vs. Crew, the Champions Semifinals. Ascend vs. Heretics, Masters 1 Finals. 100 Thieves vs. Rise, in the North American Last Chance Qualifier. Crew vs. Sentinels at Champions Group Stage. <laughs> Crew vs. Fnatic Champions quarterfinals. <sighs> Sentinels vs. Team Liquid at Champions. Version 1 vs. New, <laughs> new Turn at Reykjavik. <laughs> 100 Thieves vs. Sand at Masters Berlin. And 100 Thieves vs. Gambit at Masters Berlin. Get on with it. I don't know who's going to win this, <laughs> but let's find out. The winner, the match of the year... Crew vs. Sentinels at Champions is your match of the year. I, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> he sold it, and I'm fucking it disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm back. There we go. That was my vote. It was my uh, that's That was my second place vote, so I'm not mad at all that that one won. It was a banger of a match, and I think... I, I, we were having this debate about whether it was the biggest upset after X10 beat Envy, but I think I think it's hard to not have it up as like one of the biggest upsets ever, if not the biggest upset in Valorant history too. And just the manner in which it happened, 8-4 Sentinels are up on both of the yeah. uh, second two maps, or both of the second two, the, the, the second and the third map, they're up 8-4, and they lose both of them to ridiculous comebacks. That's just uh, unheard of. I mean, it's like the Crazy Raccoon match where I said that I felt emotions again. I felt <laughs> the joy of life, and this is this is this match did it for me as well. This match was like being, you know, when you get transformed into a vampire, you become cold and feeling this. This is the opposite of that. It's like I've been blessed with holy rays through my body, <laughs> and that's that's what this match was. I felt it very few times, but I felt it this moment because I vomit so hard. I swear to God, I was gonna blow up my voice voice box. Uh, you know, yeah. She, transcended uh yeah i was thinking about this game i didn't vote for this one i voted for crew versus gambit actually same oh really so that yep. means so that actually Ball that voted means for that this Ball one voted for this one as well yeah so we yeah. all actually voted for either crew gambit or crew yeah. sentinels mm -hmm. i voted crew sentinel or crew gambit sorry because the the stakes were higher it was deeper in the tournament um and i think the third map in that series was just outrageous um but this this was definitely up there too i mean this was a an all-time giga banger see how so, much it meant to the players this as is well. 
certainly a, a worthy recipient of oh, the, I mean, also of the, the stakes are still pretty game. high, right? Because they this was also going to be an elimination match for them here. Yes. And this is also wasn't this NA's was this NA's last hope or was this before the X10 match? I can't remember. It was before. I think it was okay. It was yeah, this was so, the yeah. first an A team. So to I get think that's also why, actually. even though it technically wasn't the last hope of NA, it, but it was the most ridiculous because it was the first time there's NA gets eliminated by. Yeah, what's the biggest right? L? Like, mm -hmm. It was just yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yep. And at this point too, we didn't know how deep crew would go, so it just felt like it came out of essentially nowhere. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was it was a nuts match. I mean, that was fantastic. I think as well, you can almost combine the Sentinels crew and the Gambit crew, which are our first place and our second place together, and just say if you wanted to watch a game that encapsulated 2021, just watch the crew run from champions. Like just and, yeah. and also listen to what the commentators to what we are saying about crew's chances as a team. They just exceeded blew out of the water our mm -hmm. expectations for them coming into champions where they'd just been kind yeah. of like an all right team that had been making out of latam there's only one spot for latam and they go all the way to the semis beating out some nuts teams both of the finalists of Reykjavik, which was <clears> another <throat> that was on our list of match of the year and crew just beat them both yeah absolutely crazy definitely yeah, some of the, barely losing. Yeah, I mean, those were those were some of the most entertaining Val uh, Valorant matches ever, for sure. All right. IGL of the year. The <gasps> in-game leader of the year. Who's it going to be? Eccles. Is it going to be Eccles? It's got to be Eccles, right? He's on 100 Thieves, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> murmuring. I'm looking at this list. I'm looking at these nominees, and I'm going to be totally honest. I don't see Eccles. Okay. Rob. First up, they've won a lot of awards already. Are they going to take another one down? Redgar from Gambit. You have Shazam, Vanity, Boaster, Bone Cold, FNS, and Steel. <laughs> the winner. Why are you laughing? Boy, how did he just <laughs> snuck his way on this one, huh? <laughs> Your winner of the 2021. IGL, Platchad Valorant Award. Oh my god, they're they're sweeping it. It's Redgar from Gambit. They're 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 sweeping it, goddammit, they're taking every award. That's not a that's not a CIS fan. The host yeah. is not a CIS they're fan. Sweeping it. Otherwise, they are literally saying, Don't come to Russia to Wyatt. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> they're win they're winning everything. Are they going to win the roster like, uh, move of the year as well? Dude, Reg <laughs> roster Reg move of the year. Won. We changed nothing and won everything. <laughs> <laughs> roster move of the year. Oh, God damn. I fell in love with... I mean, not. I mean, I was already appreciative of Redgar, but I fell in love with him after watching Gambit on Fracture. I actually just... Beth's looking at me like I'm cheating on her. No, I don't mean in a... I don't want a relationship with Redgar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like seems like a nice, nice man. Platonic yeah, I mean, way. he's lovely. He brought, he brought gifts for everybody. Maybe he'd be very thoughtful. Maybe he'd be a, a, a very thoughtful lover. But I'm not interested. <laughs> in <that. laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, I got, I got taken off track. I'm distracted over here. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I. I thought Redgar played yeah. Fracture yeah. insanely well. I think Gambit's understanding of Fracture, for considering that they didn't really have what I would consider to be a meta comp or like set strats, just the way that they understood and read the map and the push and pull of how they were controlling it was elite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. He is damn good, isn't he? Uh, personally, I mean, I, you guys could probably guess where my vote went, but I, I did vote for Shazam. Um, for, for this year but <laughs> yeah i mean i mean just everybody he's just well, what a what a what a sweet yeah, he's a, a real nice guy i didn't vote for him Dude, who did you yeah. vote for brennan i voted for shaz oh you Shazam. did mm -hmm. okay because i i felt like shaz as an igl um takes on a workload like not many other igls and in terms of the raw impact that they have few can really match him redgar does match i think the impact that puts out because redgar can frag he doesn't really play it from as impactful roles. But uh, yeah, I think Shaz was my vote just purely based on the fact that 
I think without Shaz, Sentinels wouldn't, we wouldn't even be discussing them like as a team, like at all. I think over the course of the year, as as much as the quality of their players is elite, he he adds um, that element. But again, regardless of that, I also I cannot disagree with Redgar as IGL of the year. It's it's in the results. It's in how far they get. It's the prep. It's everything. It's the way they adapt. Um, yeah, and he's a nice guy. Yeah, nice guy buff. Nice Lee, guy buff. I had Shazam as my second buff. though. I did pick Redgar, but I ended up Shazam as my second pick. It's just overall you. The thing that makes Redgar so interesting to me too is that going into the run that started with Berlin, and when I looked at Gambit, we were worried about Redgar moving to Astra. Like originally, he played like almost exclusively Omen, so we didn't know how good he's going to be on Astra. And also, he wasn't really like a hardcore fragger. I think even like back then, I feel like his frags on land. There were several maps in Champions where he was just like top fragging. Like he legitimately seemed to like change from just like oh one of those like pretty decent smoke players that is like seems to be only playing one agent in particular that actually showed they could play a breadth more agents than that and also frag while also being making an incredibly adaptable team and i think shazam fits all those bills too it's just the difference is it just obviously at the end of the day you have to pick up like where do the results come in where does your like how well your team actually does adapt and continue to remain adaptable and i feel like redgar still beat him up it, not beat him up, but beat him out in those yeah. uh, in those respects, um, <laughs> and also impressed and improved in terms of individual fragging. What did you just say? Yeah, I said see... beat him out in those respects, but I said beat him up initially. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh. I thought. Well, I I thought you just <laughs> I <What>? heard something <laughs> way different. Your guy is your guy. Oh, oh, right. the, the next and the yeah, next award and the next award. <laughs> It's the roster move of the year. Ooh. Who's it gonna be? Huh? This you, one's tough. Gamers? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> All right, folks, we've only got a couple awards left. This one's roster move of the year. Your nominees are Yay to Envy, Tens to Sentinels. Nevera to Liquid, Ethan to 100 Thieves, Kesnit to Crew, Vanity to Cloud9, Durka and Magnum to Fnatic, or Zeke to Ascend. Your winner of the 2021 Plat Chat Roster Move of the Year Award goes to... Zeke to Ascend in a tie? We can, that we can tie with yay to envy. What a shock result. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't know we could tie either. I thought we had to have a, a clear winner, but I guess we can tie now. Yeah. So mm. That just shows that we're so equal that we're not going to get anything done. That's how equal we are. We treat everyone <laughs> Wait, hold on. How do we tie with five of us? Because two of oh. us voted for and two of us voted and then... Wait, wait, wait. Who didn't vote for one of these stuff? Me. What did you do, Josh? Okay. I'll tell you, I had... Okay, I had Zeke and Ye right next to each other on my list. I listed... For all of these, I listed them all out. So I actually ranked all of them. And I had Zeke and Ye right next to each other. I think it's very reasonable for them to co-win the award because I don't think that one was of massive impact more than the other one was. But I actually had two even above those, <laughs> which shows how bonkers my brain was going. My winner... The one that I voted for, anyway, was Kesnit to Crew, because I felt like it made the biggest difference from a team being like their level before and after making the roster move. Yeah. To me, was the largest. I mean, Crew would not have even been on the map without Kesnit being involved there, and I think that that was just such a spectacularly large move, of which it, 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 they're like picking up a player that was previously a streamer on their team. I, again, it's a little shrouded in mystery for me, like I said, during the nomination show as well. So I don't exactly know how it came to happen and how genius it really was. But I think the size of the improvement was just sure. enormous. Yeah, I think that's pretty... I think that's a reasonable one. That I, yeah. I was definitely considering that one too. Um, what was the other one? Okay, the other one was Durka and Magnum to Fnatic course, for similar course, reasons because oh, I just yeah. don't, I, I just okay. don't think they would have even been on the radar. I genuinely think they would have been like 
at 10 to 20 in Europe. I think it would have been sure. that kind of level. Like they would have been sure. thoroughly off the radar, like an alliance or vitality. We wouldn't even be discussing them. You'd be, you'd be getting mad at me for, for standing bolsters strats. Yeah. Uh, and then because they made those roster moves, they are actually in contention for some of these awards. So I, I voted for the yay to envy. And, oh, and oh. for me, it was a lot to do with the timing of it. Um, and it, because it, it's, that move to me was, it was very, um, it was intentional. They know what they wanted. They know what they wanted to upgrade. They saw a, a, a viable upcoming player uh, on a tier two team who's playing unbelievably well. They could upgrade one of their players who was also excellent, um, but they did it at a good time. They had a clear intention with the move that they wanted to make. And it worked, and it leveled them up right before Berlin to, to make a deep run. Um, the reason I didn't go with, uh, like, Zeke to Ascend, for example, even though it was an excellent move, and Zeke is obviously amazing, um, that move just seemed like more of a, like a happenstance that he was available, let's get him, and then it, he just slotted in perfectly. Then, so, uh, then, it, then it had, like, the, the intention behind it as the getting yay the level up envy move did um so so that's why i didn't didn't end up going with that one um but who uh who did you went for zeke I went or for zeke. what did you go for connor i also went for zeke but my okay. second was kesnit my second was kesnit to Karu because with josh and reasoning pretty much hit all of it but yeah i think <clears throat> i think zeke was a insane fit for this team like obviously it didn't make a sin necessarily a top tier team they were going to be a good team regardless but they needed zeke to have a chance of winning champions um and having his flexibility and impact i think is it's just hard to talk understate essentially like he's just like he he's so under, overstate not understate i'm using the wrong words today i'm using the wrong <laughs> words i'm never gonna get chosen to host the golden globes i'm just <laughs> 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 Never gonna get it. Brent, why did you pick Zeke? I picked Zeke because I felt like, as a player, not only did he perform online and at LAN, and sometimes went above and beyond at LAN in the high pressure scenarios, he added a tremendous amount of options to Ascend in terms of what he played. Like sometimes just playing random, like playing the KO, for example, just pulling it out and his impact didn't seem to slip um, at any point when he was playing a multitude of roles. Yay to Envy, I think was close. I didn't rank the, the roster moves for me. Um, and I, I, I can definitely see all your points with, with Yay to Envy, but I didn't do Yay to Envy because it felt like a, an, a, a very good roster move. Yay is possibly one of the best, if not the best jet player in the world. And um, sometimes it feels like Envy are the kind of team that don't utilize him properly or not that they don't utilize him properly, but they, they really do just lean on him a lot in a lot of rounds. At the tail end of 2021, I felt like they were leaning on him a ton to try and bail him out of some scenarios, whereas Zeke, I felt like, was used well. They used his flexibility well, and he was always putting up high numbers. The final award. Fair. The, year, the Wyatt's yearly award. I gotta sit up for this. This is no week. I'm stopping, I'm stopping this slouching. This is the yearly award. Wyatt's player of the week of the year? Wyatt's, Wyatt's weekly, weekly award, award but it's the Wyatt's yearly award. That doesn't work though. He's got to be. All right, everybody, 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 yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah, calm down. Yearly award. Calm down. Everybody, calm down. This is yeah, my yearly Wyatt. award. Whoa, Wyatt! Yeah, I love Wyatt. The yearly crazy. award goes to. This is upside down. It goes to Nats. Oh, Gambit of the Gambit of just. They've swept everything. That's five awards for Gambit. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. How have they done it? There's a, a, a freight Why? ship pulling into our yard. Why did Wyatt unveil the thing? And why, why, why were you confused about it being upside down? You must have wrote it. It's your award. I know, but also I wanted it to be like, but it was upside down. So I was just acknowledging that. Josh, <laughs> let me let me let me speak. Let me do my duty. It, it, this guy is critics, always looking. Critics everywhere. He's it's on holiday. Unbelievable. He's wearing a suit. <laughs> I mean, this this guy is unbelievable. I mean, yeah, I did give it to Nats because I do think it was for the reason I kind of stated earlier why when we were talking about his player of the year. But I think he was the most influential player of the year. Yep. I think he did the most. 
in regards to actually influencing the way the game is played, the way that people look at a number of agents in the game, he has directly changed how Valorant was played in 2021. Thus, he won my player, uh, thus he won my, my yearly award, and I also voted for him for player of the year. Yeah. And also, that means that Gambit have won five out of seven the, of the awards. I mean, it's actually like, the, the, it's the, the picture of Drake at the MTV Awards when he's just got like 30 trophies. It's that, but with Nats. They've just, they've swept it. They've won everything. Well, I the mean, other thing too, Wyatt, is they were second place in match of the year with them against Crew, and they didn't even have a roster move, so they weren't eligible. So they yeah. either won first or like, they, they won first in everything apart from second in one award in which they were eligible. Yeah. That's absurd. <laughs> pretty pretty absurd crazy. year. For, you know, for Gambit. There's a stark Pretty difference absurd. between the the yearly the Wyatt Yearly Award and the Bren Yearly Award and the Overwatch show. Yeah. In yes. that the <laughs> yes, Bren is. Yearly Award went to the scientific community. Yeah. They've for, done a lot. <laughs> they've done good work. But I I yeah, I respect the Nats pick for sure. This is uh yeah. I'm not gonna rehash the same points that we've been speaking about. Yeah. At the end of at the end of this, I just wanted to um, we, we discussed during the nomination show the idea of potentially having the fans vote and we said well no Upcomer are kind of doing that as well right that, like, that's one of the mm -hmm. things that they were doing with their awards was letting the community vote on them too and their, their voting was just um, at least a third of all of their votes came from the Spanish speaking or Latin America in general community and so all of their awards went to went to people from South America it's like <laughs> or, or Spanish speaking in general <laughs> Um, so it's like a, the the split of Spanish or Portuguese speaking players just and 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 like analysts and streamers and stuff just won everything. So did we, did, like we didn't, so didn't win. Team of the, year, the stream. No, we were up for analyst of the year, and it went to Hitbox, um, who is a Spanish streamer who took analyst of the year, who previously coached Giants Gaming. Listen, if I, we I move to Spanish Latin America, we can win awards. God. If we just become, if we Damn just it. go there, we can, we can win awards. We didn't we win. Can do it. We need to base our entire headquarters <laughs> in Latin America. We need to go to Latin America and we need to learn Spanish. And we, if we, we do win. that, we will become gigantic. We will be bigger Damn. than eventually Reddit won't hate us because did, we'll it be was too big to fail. Weren't we like six V one? How do we lose? Yeah, our analyst, our analyst was five people. I think it was the curse. Did it? Yes, it was, it was six, six people. It was six people. Uh, <laughs> and we lost. I mean, that's a, that's an, an egregious one. L. <laughs> it was six of us and one and we lost. Yeah, there was, uh, I, yeah, there's a uh, Turkish streamer. Oh, this is actually cool, though. I wanted to see what you guys thought of this um, Team of the Year award that Upcomer did, actually. This was their, like, all-pro Team of the Year. CNED, Scream, Redgar, Chronicle, Nats. So we already voted Nats as Player of the Year. He has to be on the team. Redgar won IGL of the Year. He has to be on the team, right? Yeah. So then CNED, Scream, Chronicle. What do you think about this team? I had CNED as my player, as my vote, the Player of the Year. I'm happy with seeing I, 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 think, I think I think Scream being the flex player is kind of interesting, but I mean he has played like what? He plays Reyna and Jet and uh <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of weird to have him in the flex role cuz he does it's play cool. in he plays an interesting role on Liquid where he's a Jet and a Reyna. Yeah. Which is yeah, not that's how he plays really. So Yeah, so I mean, in that it's stage. it would it, yeah. I mean, it would probably make yeah. more sense to have like Zeke in flex, Zeke. right? Mm -hmm. I think Zeke um, would probably been the flex pick if you're going to pick a flex. Dude, yeah. this would be nasty as well. You've got the front line, yeah, bro. You've got the front line from Ascend, Cned, and Zeke, and then you've got Redgar, Chronicle, Nats to support. Oh, that would be nasty. I yeah. think I think I need to change my sports shorts that I'm still wearing from playing badminton an hour ago. <laughs> I mean, that's just so way too I mean, specific because so... the, the term sports shorts sounds so bad. I don't know why it sounds so bad in this context. Oh, but it's, my, oh god. my god. <laughs> I mean, put them away. Why? They are. Josh doesn't own any shorts that go above, above the knee. His calves. No, they have Dude, to. I mean, they have to drop away. below the knee. Yes. I mean, why are you showing? Stop all showing that? us your leg. Stop showing your smooth leg to everybody. It's so Sorry. smooth and hairless. <laughs> Josh, it's a naked Josh. mole rat from the from the waist down. It, you you really are. 
Bren is, <laughs> Bren is, Bren is just doubled over. Bren is dying. Earlier, earlier, you you're like an enlarged baby. Josh, Josh, no actually he is. He's dressed up like the fucking boss baby right now. <laughs> I like how this just turned into roasting Josh in the show. Oh, I was thinking oh. more like a lock stock, uh, smoking barrel, like alternate villain. You know, like you know, just that yeah. chase to stay with him, like a, some sort of gangster. He'd be named like Big oh. Iron or something. It's it's definitely uh, it's get, it's getting hot in here. The temperature is <sighs> rising. Jesus Christ <sighs> Almighty! All right. Uh, I mean, that's unless there's some kind of break. Kurt, is there any breaking news? I don't think so, but I made this thing for in the future when we have breaking news. Whoa, oh, dude, we got to use the graphic. <laughs> Let me have a quick... Yeah, let's I'll scan. Check. I just like to make sure that we don't go and then a thing has happened and then we don't talk about the um, thing. I mean, Josh, is like just, Josh thinks that the show is over. He's just getting Broke. undressed. Yeah, doesn't look like done. it. Okay, there's no breaking news. That means that all you have to do right now... Just hit the like and subscribe button. We What's the like goal? Uh what do we normally get? Like twenty? A hundred. Yeah, if we get a hundred <laughs> likes, we'll record the episode for next week. Okay. Yeah, that's All good. Right. Deal. That's good. Everybody yeah. like. Everybody make sure to like the video and we'll see you next week with more Valorant news. Bye. <laughs>